We are on the verge of a new sexual revolution. Long distance hugs, virtual reality porn, technosexuals living with automated dolls. You might have caught such news snippets and it's only the beginning of a technological transformation of sex. Sex tech is already a $30 billion strong industry and analysts expect it to only grow bigger. But other than the obvious innovations, tech can also augment sexual health especially when it comes to stigmatized conditions. This is Dr. Bertalan Meshko and you're watching The Medical Futurist. In 1932, sociologist James Bossard looked through 5,000 consecutive marriage licenses in Philadelphia and he found that one-third of the newlywed couples had lived within a five-block radius of each other before they got together. Only 17% lived more than 20 blocks away. You can imagine how those numbers must have changed by now. Tinder, Grindr, Bumble, Hinge opened up the world of dating and already transformed the way we date while social media changed the way we experience relationships. But the disruption of sex and relationships doesn't stop there. As the adult entertainment industry is usually on the cutting edge of the technological revolution, when virtual reality became feasible, they were the first ones to ride on it. Now, as the pandemic cut off our social ties, their investments are showing major returns. VR porn companies have experienced a 30% growth in sales recently, and VR porn accounts for half of the entire virtual reality market. It's easy to see the appeal. VR puts the audience in the movie and thanks to the 360 degree experience allows viewers to look around making it feel more real. Taking this one step further, there are so-called teledildonic devices for both male and female that can be synced with VR porn. But of course, porn always has a dark side when it comes to the psychological effects of the consumer. People can get addicted, which in turn can affect their sex life and jeopardize relationships. So the VR revolution on this field is sort of a drug on steroids, so indulge in it carefully. Taking this even further, sex dolls can bring the experience a lot closer. They are still in the uncanny valley, but we are miles from the blow-up dolls that got them famous at bachelor parties. These days, they are made out of lifelike silicon, and companies like Real Doll and Real Robotics even create AI-powered dolls with facial expressions and conversing abilities. As a result, sex doll brothels are popping up around the world now. Some people would say that this is a bit weird and a bit creepy. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? I always say, well, why? Why is it creepy? They see it as, oh, disgusting. Why are you wasting your time? You know, spend time with real people. But my dolls aren't judgmental. They don't say horrible things they wouldn't have voted for Brexit. And that's why I like them. <laughs> sex dolls cost thousands of dollars, but an hour with one of them is quite affordable for anyone. And from a legal standpoint, these brothels have the advantage to be legal in many countries. But you might wonder what the appeal is for the customers. If you're going to pay for sex, why not pay a real person? Why pay for a doll? It's very different. A prostitute is a real person and can judge you for the way you look or for fantasies you have. A doll can't do that. With a doll, all I had to think about was my own satisfaction. Futurist Dr. Ian Pearson estimates that by 2050, human-robot sex will become more common than human-human sex. But other than sex, can they provide companionship? Or to go further, can they be partners in relationship too? Famous technosexual Dave Kett told me that having a synthetic wife and a synthetic mistress improved his life enormously. He said he felt isolated and alone, without a place in society. But after he began his relationship with his synthetic partners, everything changed. He says he is now happy and that his friends accept his choice. So are these people delusional or are they onto something? Dave, she can't see. Yeah. And she can't hear. Yes. But one of the most fundamental elements of an addiction is it provides relief from pain. Yes. What's the pain here? Uh, the pain, I would have to say, would be loneliness, really. 
well, it's hard to argue with that, isn't it? You might feel shock, frustration, amazement, or the combination of all three, but also consider that technology has always been developed as a response to human needs. As Dave Cat put it, there are desperately lonely people who need companionship. There are people who live in long-distance relationships who can use devices that can be controlled by their partners through an app. Or we can talk about those who have problems with monogamy of, or forming long-lasting relationships. You can't hurt a doll's feelings. And then there are those who live in a marriage but their sexual life is broken. The future of sex tech offers solutions to each and every one of these problems so that people can live a more fulfilling sexual life, even if it looks a bit uncanny today. But of course, the technological disruption comes at a price. Let's take a look at Japan, where the population is in a rapid decline, partially due to the thriving hikikomori culture, in which people isolate themselves from society. These days, that's easier than ever, and the Japanese population has been on the decline for 10 years straight, as the gap between births and deaths keep widening. A quarter of all Japanese aged between 30 and 40 are virgins, and 50% of the population admits to not having sex regularly. This should definitely be taken into account when we talk about the societal impact of the emerging sex tech revolution. On one hand, these people can avoid being lonely, but on the other hand, all this can be a, a death sentence for entire societies. And if you think you are not on a path that's at least a little bit similar to all this, let me show you the Japanese version of a synthetic partner. It's not that far off from where Alexa or Siri is, isn't it? And we don't have to go extreme lengths to see how sex tech will move from the fringes to the mainstream. It has the power to destigmatize sexual health, which is still a taboo subject for many. There are now sex apps for people to help them discover their sexuality and digital health services for men who struggle with conditions like uh, erectile dysfunction or premature ejaculation. Ultimately, I think that we've seen how tech can separate us, but ironically, bringing us together as well. Sex tech will no doubt lead to a new sexual revolution where overlooked people will have a shot to have a more healthier and happier life. But the same way the jury is still out on social media's effects on our relationships, sex tech faces the same scrutiny. We should teach younger generations how to love, how to feel empathetic towards others, how to form long-lasting bonds, while also figuring out what place technology might get in our lives and sexuality. To preserve the core of being a human, we should do that soon. After all, what remains when the most precious human interactions, touching another human being with love, care and empathy, lose their authenticity and are completely replaced by robots and VR? Look, you know how much I love to test and review advanced technologies and I do understand why people who feel lonely reach out to those I just described, but it's really hard for me to see the place of these tools in human relationships. But maybe you have a better understanding of this. Leave a comment and let's talk about it. If you like this video, please subscribe below and don't forget to tap the notification bell too so you will get notified about all new videos. Thank you.